G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, finally we got some good news out. Uh, a couple of different stories here that I want to go through and we'll start with this one. Underdog story. Why XRP could soon outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now that's a really big call, I know. But I do have some XRP. I'm a bit of a fan and it's my third biggest uh, holdings. Obviously, Bitcoin's my number one, Ethereum's my number two, and XRP's my number three. So let's go down and have a look and see what they have to say. All right, XRP led last crypto rally to all-time highs. Back in late 2017 and early 2018, Bitcoin peaked at $20,000, Ethereum at over $1,400, and Ripple at over $3.80 per token. They all came tumbling, uh, toppling down and spent, uh, and spent ever since in a bear market. But did you know that it was XRP that led the initial charge in early 2017 and helped carry both Ethereum and Bitcoin higher? Again, not my words, but there's an interesting chart here. And this is showing that it was XRP that sort of really pumped hard first. And then Ethereum and then Bitcoin. So very interesting chart. I wasn't aware of that. I, d I don't recall Bitcoin sort of going up, uh, sorry, XRP going up first. I do recall it going from 30 cents to basically nearly $4, but I didn't know it was leading the sort of rally. So that's a very interesting chart. And I guess we'll have to be waiting to see whether history is going to repeat itself. But what we can do is go down here. The total crypt uh, the cryptocurrency total market cap was up over 80% year to date at, at the 2020 high but has since taken a breather after an especially hot summer. At the start of the breakout in July, XRP, out, XRP beat out other altcoins and the top rank cryptocurrency in week over week performance. I knew XRP was generally doing pretty good. Uh, it's not as good now, but it was earlier. Once again, things have since cooled off for Ripple, but it could be the calm before the storm. XRP BTC pairing and XRP ETH pairing price charts both are potentially signaling a repeat of Ripple leading the way for the crypto market. So as we can see here, it's got that sort of downward sort of channel going on and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Along with a massive falling wedge pattern on both pairing price charts, there are also several bullish divergences. Each low put in was also characterized by a wick below the trend line to shake out traders before the actual move takes place. Zooming out further to monthly time frames, each has triggered a TD9 or 13 buy signal at the bottom of what has been an extended downtrend, downtrend against the two uh, top assets in the space. With well, all of these technicals pointing to an XRP breakout against both Bitcoin and Ethereum, the past evidence showing that Ripple was the first to pump a major rally in crypto could soon be here. So very, very interesting and I am definitely hoping XRP is going to lead the way uh, and I have said in uh, a previous video I'm not sure exactly what the top price is going to be and I don't like to make sort of price predictions because you know that's all it is it's, it's a guess uh, and it's not that I don't like to make guesses on anything but I don't think it would be too hard to conceive that XRP might go to $10 this time look it could could go higher and it might not go to $10 uh, I'm not really sure no one really knows it's just an educated guess but considering it went from you know less than a cent up to three dollars eighty last time, and it's currently sitting around that kind of twenty cent mark, I don't think it'd be too crazy to think it might go to ten dollars. And again, could go a whole lot higher. You know, I will definitely start to sort of start to sell once we sort of get. I would say really above the sort of five dollar mark, I'll start to sell some of it, and I'll slowly but surely scale out what I'm willing to sell. So very, very interesting. And there's more to it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, XRP, you know, it's a shit coin is what a lot of people say. And it's a banker's coin and all the rest of it. No one wants to get involved in it. But, you know, it has a big following as well. Obviously, the XRP army. But here's something that might make you think differently about XRP. So we have the Flare Network. If you're not aware, uh, Flare Network is... Uh, it's a smart contract for XRP that's due to come out, I think, around about December. So if you haven't already uh, put in to get your uh, FXRP, uh, I advise you do that. Uh, just get on YouTube and put uh, how to get uh, FXRP Flare Network tokens on Google, uh, Google or YouTube, whatever, and it'll show you how to do it. It's a pretty easy process. I, I used uh, one and it yeah, only took a few minutes. 
But what I found really interesting was here. Flare's CEO pointed out that the system of the platform could be expanded for Bitcoin and Litecoin. I think it's Fillion noted that the Flare community through the Spark token will have a say in whether the network expands to these and other blockchains. So the Flare network, it's already linked up with Ethereum. And so now it could also get linked up with uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin. So very interesting. But what I like down here was something I spoke about the other week as well. Flare's CEO said the platform brings big value to the entire crypto ecosystem. Fillion explained some weaknesses that projects based on proof of stake, specifically Ethereum 2.0, have and how Flare, network, Flare Networks will, continue, will contribute, sorry, I'm struggling here, contribute by scaling not only the number of transactions a network allows, but by scaling its value. And look, ETH really does have a scaling problem at the moment. And initially, ETH 2.0, it's really just staking, that's all it is. There's there's not a whole lot of scaling in there. And Vitalik uh, Buterin has already come out and said, you know, there's currently uh, scaling things out there, but they just have to be adopted. So Loopring and, uh, you know, there's a number of projects out there. Matic, uh, Staked I might also help. But what do we know about XRP? It's super fast. So you now start to put XRP in with Ethereum uh, and Ethereum 2.0 in that great scaling solution. So that is what makes me think that there's going to be some big upside to XRP. I'm pretty pumped and I'm looking forward to it. Now, another good story that I found uh, is Joe Rogan. He did a podcast the other day and he did uh, the podcast with, I think it's Andrew Curry was his name. Now, this was really interesting. Joe Rogan has a massive following. He's got, uh, you know, millions of people watching his channel all the time. And a number of times, Bitcoin has been mentioned on his program. So it's getting out there to the sort of masses. Now, not the complete masses, but again, he's one of the biggest people on YouTube. He is moving from YouTube. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, how his uh, audience, whether they follow over when he goes over to uh, the new platform. But at the moment, he's massive. So this is what was said. Part of the way through the interview, Curry talked about how all the Silicon Valley companies want to be your bank and control how people spend their money. Curry then turned the conversation to Bitcoin saying, let me tell you, the apocalypse is coming and you're going to need a Bitcoin, at least one. Rogan then asked Curry if he had become a Bitcoin salesman. Curry replied, no, I was very anti-Bitcoin until I sold a shitload of them at like $900. I got them for nothing. People just gave them to me in the beginning. Rogan then, uh, then asked why we need to care so much about just one cryptocurrency, i.e. Bitcoin, and that if Bitcoin became the standard digital currency, was there no chance it could be somehow manipulated in the future? Curry answered, 10 years of data have shown that Bitcoin really is the only one that you can trust. That's really the only one that you cannot manipulate and all of the other coins are based off it. I would have to agree with some of that. I think other coins are still going to be used. I think Ethereum uh, is going to be big. I think XRP is going to be big uh, in the sort of currency stakes and but, you know, particularly the smart contract sort of space Ethereum. And you know, now the Flare Network, we'll have to wait and see. But again, more Bitcoin is being mentioned on Joe Rogan and he's got a huge following. He's got millions of followers uh, and he's got his podcast that gets you know, downloaded you know, who knows how many times in a week but this is good for mass adoption. Now, old Dave Portnoy. <laughs> My heart is in crypto, he says. So we can go over to here and we'll have a look. Now, I'm not going to play this because obviously there's uh, rights that he has for all the rest of it. But basically in this, he says his heart's in crypto and he's going to get back into the crypto place. Uh, he loves the, the Link Marines. Uh, he doesn't like uh, another one. What was it called? It started with an O. Oh, I can't remember it. But anyway, basically says he is going to get back into crypto, but he still needs to figure out the stock market first. So basically what's going to happen there is eventually, sure, he's going to get back in, but he's going to be buying at higher prices and he's going to have missed out on the gains. But again, he has a massive following and he's talking about getting back into crypto. So this is only good news for the crypto space. You know, unfortunately, he just kind of didn't hold but then again, maybe, you know, there'll be another leg down and he'll get in at an even cheaper price at some stage. I'm, I'm not overly confident of that. And if we do go down another leg, I don't think it'll be by too much. 
But again, he's got a massive audience. Millions of people, you know, tune into him. And if he says he's getting back into crypto, you can guarantee others are going to flood back in. Now, pandemic will spread. Sorry, where is it? Pandemic will speed Bitcoin adoption, says uh, DBS Bank Economist. So, there's a gentleman here, uh, and he says that Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's going to be big along with digital currencies and things like that. Now, he used to be uh, an economist uh, at the Money Monetary Authority of Singapore, uh, Deutsche Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. And he says he likes to zoom out and take a macro view of digital currencies and the potential play of central bank uh, digital currencies. There has been a steady rise in gold, while fixed income yields are heading towards zero, Bag or Baig said, I'm not sure how to say his name, I've probably butchered it that, and I apologise. And such conditions have also caused Bitcoin to come back uh, quite convincingly. Uh, and much the same in the other one, it's been around for 10 years, and yes, it has major pumps, and it has major dumps. That's what it is, it's volatile. It's still probably got at least this cycle and maybe even another cycle to go before it finds its kind of, I guess, you know, true value and starts to settle down a bit. But I'd say we've probably still got a decade of, you know, reasonable amounts of volatility. But again, this is a guy who used to work for, you know, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Deutsche Bank and the IMF. And he's basically bullish on Bitcoin. If you're not into cryptocurrencies at the moment and you're umming and ahhing and you know not sure, the information is there. It is in front of your face. If you're not willing to take this opportunity, then you're going to miss out. And when you do get into Bitcoin, it'll be in you know 10 years time when it's like a stable coin. You will have missed the massive growth. But you need to do some research and understand that when you get in, it could dump by more from here. Who knows? I don't think it's going to go down much more. If it does go down, we may have found the bottom. But just hold, it's like any asset. If you got into stocks just the other day, the S&P 500 took a tumble. If you got into Tesla, it went from 555 down to $350. So that would have hurt as well. It's not like cryptocurrencies is the only market that dumps. All markets do. Just cryptocurrencies do it a lot harder, a lot faster and more regularly. But, you know, if you can hold through the pain, the gains are totally worth it. Now, another interesting story I found. So, Whale Vault gobbles up virtual real estate for development in the sandbox. So, blockchain intelligence firm Masari estimates that nearly 50% of the vault is compromised of land tokens, making Whale the second biggest holder behind Binance. So, Binance has got in on this as well. Binance, the exchange, received a significant number of the tokens from hosting the 3 million land initial exchange offering on Binance Launchpad and purchased a, for the, a further 4,012 land tokens earlier this week. So Binance are pretty clued on and they're buying more. I reckon that might be an indicator that, you know, these NFTs and all that, they're going to be big. So again, I've got my, myself a reasonable position in Engine. Uh, you know, a position in Decentraland, and I'm looking at getting some wax as well. And, you know, on these dips is probably a great time to get in as well. Not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I think NFTs are going to be huge, and the whole gaming space is going to be massive with cryptocurrencies. But that's my personal opinion. You've got to make your own decision. You know, things like this, this is what helps to confirm it for me. It's not just one article, though, that I read and think, oh, that's all the information I lead. I need. There's a ton of other people who think so. You know, Alex from Nuggets News, he's uh, bullish on it. Uh, you know, there's a number of other people. And again, it's not just about, you know, uh, YouTube crypto influencers and things like that. But again, you know, Binance, they're in it for the money. And if they're getting in and buying more, chances are there's probably going to be a lot of money in there. And look, it has gone up a fair amount already. Where was it here? Whale tokens represent fractional ownership in the vault. The private NFT collection of the prominent crypto investor and social media profile uh, Whale Shark Pro, it has garnered a $16 million market cap despite holding just $1 million worth of NFTs, suggesting many speculators believe Whale Shark's connection of rare tokens is likely to grow in value significantly. So again, if a whale's getting in, they're generally the smart money, they understand. And then Binance is getting in, again, they're pretty smart money, love them or hate them, they're, they're smart and they make a lot of money. That is an indicator there 
that there's probably something there. Do some further research, but I know for me, I'm making, a, I'm getting some positions going in the NFT space, uh, the digital gaming space. All right. So the market's been pretty brutal over sort of the last week, and there's not really been too many exceptional gains of late, except for our old favourite. DeFi. Everyone thought it was dead. Look at these gains. Ave, Ave, back up 23%. Yearn Finance, 29%. Maker, 5% or 4.5%. Chainlink, 4.5%. Synthetics Network, 17%. Ren, 20%. Loopring, there we go, 21%. Kyber Network, 3 Sushi Swap. Look, I wouldn't touch Susie Schwab with your money, <laughs> but if you want to get into it, by all means, go ahead. You know, Nexus Mutual, 11%, you know, 4%, 17% DeFi money. So DeFi is the thing at the moment, and look how much money's piling back in already to it. So again, that's probably an indicator that we've maybe found the bottom, and if we haven't, we're probably still not too far from it. Well... We hope anyway. Let's go and quickly have a look at the Bitcoin chart and see what we got over here. So this is what I'm looking for. It looks like there might be a bit of a W pattern forming here and we just have to wait and see. So we've broke down. We came up, but we didn't eclipse that uh, previous high there. We broke down, but the low wasn't as low as this low over here. And this low, I guess, you know, technically was a little bit lower. But all we could do is then just pull that down to here if we want. So now we're waiting to see if this can pump up higher. But really, I would want it to get above here. So really, I want to see $10,700 for Bitcoin before I think, you know, we've definitely started to make our way back up. But if this doesn't sort of break out and up and we sell off here, well, again, here's the trend line. The trend line is we're going down at the moment. So we need to see if there's a bit of a correction here. So again, we got to the bottom, we pumped up a little bit, we fell down. Pumped up a little bit, fell down, and now we're just waiting to see where this goes. And don't worry about these uh, letters and all the rest of it. That was just the one that uh, I could use to show this. But again, a bit of a W pattern. We'll have to wait and see whether it's going to play out in our favor and break to the upside, or if this just rolls over and there's some more downside. Anyway, that's been a bit of a long one for me. Lots of interesting news. Uh, I am, you know, I'm relatively confident that, you know, if we do go to the downside, we're not going to go much lower. Again, I would really be surprised if we got, you know, down below, yeah, you know, 9,000 sort of 600. And if we did go below that, again, the thing I'd really be watching for is that 200 day moving average. If we're truly in a bull market and based on previous history, we shouldn't go past uh, the 200 day moving average. But again, the uh, 20 week moving average and the 21 exponential moving average were both around these points down here. And it seems though, seems as though we might have bounced off them. So time will tell. All right, that's it from me, everybody. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train today and I'll see you next time.